Well, greetings and salutations. <laughs> well, over the past three days, I've been gathering material together to respond to Jaronism's There Are No Star Trails on the Globe, which makes absolutely no sense. And we won't even go into the fact that he opens up his video with um, distorted Star Trail pictures, uh, uh, which were widened. I'm not blaming him necessarily, but uh, I just find that rather interesting that he would do such a thing. Um, so. You know, we'll, we can we can go into that at a later time, um, because you know those oval things. That's actually what it is that uh, you would be expecting to see if it were a flat Earth, because they wouldn't be round if they were a circular that was rotating under the stars. Anyway, um, the bu -bu -bu -bum, let me see here, like that, like that, okay, and then let me go over here. So, uh, but this is just a, a prequel, um, just a preface to me finishing that video. Uh, hopefully, I'll have it finished tonight. Um, and so, let me see here, share and present to everyone. Okay, so, but the thing is that I saw, well, the most of uh, his response to, uh, to Wolfie's video. Um, and his primary gripe was the fact that he didn't do it on a ball. Well, you know, if it's something that's rotating and it's rotating in a perfectly circular manner, guess what? That's just like standing on a ball. Um, and then angling inwards would represent being higher or closer towards the northern pole. Um, so anyway, <laughs> this, this was in, in getting ready for this, um, I felt it necessary to point this part out. And by the way, Jaron, uh, if you decide that you are going to make a response video to my video, just like the one you did with Wolfie's, which was absolutely pathetic, um, because the only thing that you wanted to bitch about was the fact that he had it on a mount instead of on a ball. Well, sorry, not all of us, not all of us have a mini cam in our pocket that we can put on a ball. We're not making as much money at this as you are. Okay. So, um, and, but until such time, uh, as you, uh, start, you know, preparing to put together your video, um, I'll give you a little bit of leeway here and I will go ahead and let you, uh, um, uh, please start your response to me with, uh, why you didn't respond to the fact that I debunked your Umbra and Penumbra claims. Cause you say they don't exist when they actually do. Um, why it is in the Globebusters, uh, I don't remember exactly which one it was, something episode 22, I think it was. Look on Quickie, Quickie 2 or Quickie 3, you'll see, yeah, Quickie 2, you'll see it um, in the text during the Earth rotation portion. Um, I actually have a timestamp in there of why you think it is that an underwater habitat with a, with a moon pool uh, would somehow be flooded, because the answer to that question is, have you never turned a glass upside down over water and trapped the air inside of it? So, uh, and then uh, we're still waiting on an answer for why you say that uh, all lenses make everything curved. Um, you said that in one of the larger hangouts, and I was, uh, I was actually listening to it uh, live with uh, Red's Rhetoric on his uh, channel. This was a couple months ago. Um, you still have to also explain why uh, the, uh, where, where your 8,000 plus feet of mountain went away on your, uh, on your France, uh, uh, what was it, Canigou Mountain. Um, you need to explain why 8,000 feet are gone with that. Um, then uh, in one of your little your little infomercial style videos, um, you said that bloat, boats uh, can be blocked by swells and land. Um, I agree they can be block, blocked by land, but when you only see water, if you want to say that it's being blocked by a swell, you have to say where that tidal wave went and why nobody heard about it. Uh, and lastly, uh, I would also like to have in your video, um, you have a uh, one of your many bubbles claims um, of the uh, International Space Station. Now, of course, there's the occasional thing that flies by. It's little bits of debris or little uh, chips of things. They don't fall to the floor. They keep on floating. Um, but uh, one particular one you have, uh, it shows uh, an external camera, obviously, looking at uh, the airlock. And as the airlock is venting out the atmosphere that's in that airlock, um, water crystals uh, shoot out, of course, and you claim them as bubbles. Well, in order for them to be bubbles, traveling at that particular distance and maybe even that particular speed, which you, I noticed you didn't address, um, yeah, 
you need to also address why they're all they are all not going in the exact same vertical or you know even by camera orientation it doesn't make sense um why they're not all going in the exact same parallel direction okay i realize they're going a little bit off to let's say about the two o'clock of the screen um which you would probably blame on camera orientation and that's fine you know i would almost buy it but the problem is is that they're not all going in that exact same direction there's one of them that goes off at about 12 o'clock there's one of them that goes off at about three o'clock and continue on in that direction which would not happen in an underwater environment with bubbles anyway so let me uh so let me get off of that and let me go into why i'm making this short little presentation uh this little presentation is very simple um it has to do with the test that you performed in your challenge video uh, um, and the reason why that's important to, to address is because of the fact that if you can't do it yourself or if you can't do a an experiment yourself properly then you really don't have any words to say and it's probably why you don't understand the world around you um, so let me go ahead and uh, let me go on to the next the first slide here okay first slide okay this is uh, from your video and uh, this is uh, this is your globe sitting at the ground and then you have a string going up to the ceiling anybody who saw the video knows exactly what you are attempting to say there but the problem is that you did it oh my god did you do it wrong and no I don't mean putting a laser on a globe or any any other type of rotational thing where you can actually predict the direction of its axis I don't mean that that's wrong I mean your setup is bad okay and I'll go into that right here first of all this string that you have on there is not completely uh, not directly lined up with the poles okay now you're going to say that this is some kind of a, uh, a minor error this was a hasty test and we've all heard 18.5 pounds of fucking stupidity when it comes to somebody claiming that the only reason why they screwed up a test is because they did it in a hasty manner okay so What's up, Dang Joss? What's going on, guys? And uh, what do you call it? So let me uh, let me go on, keep going through the here real quick. Um, but as you can see, the green line here is tracing down exactly along this line. And while it obviously it meets up with the screw of which it's tied to, you can actually see that it is not along the axis. Otherwise, it would meet up with the other screw on the bottom. Okay, straight line, very simple. Funny enough, you even show it in your own thing here. But you try to compensate for it by saying the strings out here by using a, a thicker line if you could see on this side of it you can see a little bit of the string and then up here you can see a little bit of the string on that side of it okay you even showed that it's not lined up don't worry about this line this line has nothing to do with the globe he's pointing at his dog okay so this is what it would look like this is the line that it would have to follow if that thing was going straight up from the pole okay because this line here is nothing more than a cross on this uh, uh, on this circle right here and it goes from screw to screw okay and yours does not therefore over the distance that's probably going up and I would say that's probably about mm, seven feet maybe eight feet I don't know exactly um, but but you know an average height of a ceiling I would say is about seven feet and uh, the uh, and going over that distance, that makes a considerable distance away from the axis of the globe. So, next, your laser. This was funny. Now, we won't go into the laser just yet because I got one more uh, clarification to make about, the, uh, about your string. Okay. The cool part about geometry is that if I have a circle and I can make an uh, equator line on each side of it, um, this axis will line up. That means that right about here, is the screw on the bottom of the globe right about here okay because this will always be a straight line through the equator if it is going from uh, uh, axis uh, axis tip to axis tip of the uh, sphere okay which is showing that now as you get closer to it the, the side view wasn't telling enough of course but as this was about as close as you got to the actual uh, uh, um, and the other orientation from from this direction looking at the uh the globe and if you could if i follow the string here which i drew a nice little line here and it is straight as an arrow powerpoint's not going to bullshit you they don't have a uh fake the earth button so um it goes from this point to this point and you can see that as you get closer here that means that it's not only is it leaning back a bit but it is also going towards your archway 
uh, away from your globe. Okay, so it's not even close to being centered. Not even close. I mean, I'll give you a little bit of tolerance, but that's not even close. Okay, so now on to your laser. Your laser was funny. Okay, now does anybody see a problem with this laser? This is the laser that he has that he says that is uh, perfectly lined up or at least in a hasty manner uh, lined up on the side of the globe and it should be tracing a circle around the connection point of the string on the ceiling. That's what he says, okay? That's what he says. And he's expecting that the, uh, the laser dot should go around the circle, which it's not going to, especially not in this particular alignment. Because if you look here, this here is the text on his globe for the anti-meridian, okay? Prime meridian's on the other side going through London. Here's the anti-meridian right here. Do you see that this and this are lined up at all? Really? Does anybody see that this is lined up at all? It's not lined up at all. So not only is his string going, it's leaning. Okay, I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna make some I'm gonna make up some names here, um, just real quick here along the grain of his floor here. Okay, and we'll use the grain of his floor. Okay, we'll say that north is the direction that this is this is right here. Okay, south is the opposite direction of that, and east and west will be the grains of his floor. Obviously, that's not what it is on the globe. Uh, I'm just trying to get an, an orientation so people know which directions I'm talking about. His original picture way back here shows that it is actually leaning a little bit south of what it should be. Okay, It should actually be tilted a little bit more clockwise in this sense. It should be going a little bit more north as the orientation that I just gave. Okay, Now, what you also are going to see here is that it is also going off to the west. So it's not even it's not even close to right. Okay, that's the string. Okay, the string here as he gets a little bit further away, as he gets a little bit closer, you can actually see that the string is way off. Okay, I mean, and yes, uh, uh, Moto Kit Six Hundred. I a hundred percent agree with you. The reason why he did this was he can get clicks and other people to make videos so he can make more money off of it. I 100% agree with you. Now, if you look at this string line, now it's almost lined up with this, but this isn't even going, this isn't even at the middle at this point, okay? Because his laser is off by that much, just at this location alone, which means that when you rotate this around, the butt end of the laser is going to touch before, is going to touch this frame before the head is, okay? And this head's kind of weird. I don't really get it. It doesn't seem to follow a straight geometry at least not in the video okay that might be a resolution issue I don't know but it just looks weird you'll see in a second now this is it this is his uh, uh, what do you call it Th this is it going around to the side here and you can see like the heads like canted I, I don't know how to explain that but the laser body itself is going up like this and even a little bit away from the globe itself and his uh, stick point where he has this his stick point is actually not on the equator okay his stick point if you look here you could see Hawaii his stick points only a little bit below Hawaii but I wouldn't call that the full 15 degrees okay or uh, actually it's a little bit more that's supposed to be uh, but nevertheless it's not even on the equator and it's not leaning alongside the equator so that's off now you can see here now you can play it up in his video uh, if you want to um, go right ahead, uh, this particular point that I'm pointing out is at uh, minute 13:49 of this video. Um, you can see that the uh, uh, the bottom of his video or the bottom of his laser actually hits the frame before the top even gets close to it, which means it's not even aligned correctly. Okay, it's not aligned correctly. Okay, and I won't even go. Well, I might go into it another time, but I won't even go into how bad this part was. OK, I mean, I'm not even going to go into it, but you can see how it's leaned over to the left because otherwise, I mean, you, you dude, you can even see it. Look, here would be the lines for the screw. OK, this screw is pointing straight down at the axis, straight to the bottom side of the globe. This is pointing that way. OK, it's it's pointing a bit more to the left of it. So it's he, he can't even science, dude. OK, he can't even science. There's nothing else to say about it, okay? So like I said, this is just a prequel 
to uh, uh, me doing my particular uh, test to show him how, uh, uh, how to really do something like this and how to really test uh, stationary objects or stationary light sources, excuse me, uh, as filmed from a rotating base. Okay, Wolfie already did an excellent job of this. But of course, the only thing that uh, uh, Jaren is going to say could say about it was quite simply, uh, "Well, you didn't put it on a ball." You know what? What is the difference? There is no difference if you put it on a on a on hell on a on an L on an LP. Okay, you will get the exact same results as if you had stuck it onto the side of a ball. Okay, it doesn't matter. So. The thing is, is that he keeps on, he, he screwed this up so bad that I had to make this little video just about it. Okay. Now, uh, moonlight test. Oh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> well, shit. While I'm here, I might as well just address all these things. Um, yeah, there's a, uh, there's a moonlight video out now from Thrive and Survive. Guys, look here. The, the moonlight test, I personally have performed it. I have personally performed it. And, yes. The moonlit side is cooler than the shaded side. And I did this out in the middle of a field with styrofoam barriers. Okay. It is 100% true. However, it 100% dissolves any claims that the light from the moon is self generated from the moon. Very simple reason why that is because anything that generates its own light generates its own heat. Therefore, you would be expecting to see heat on the lit side. Okay, it's it's a well known fact for the people who went to the moon and studied the stuff the stuff that came back from the moon that everything up there because there's no atmosphere because there's no water because there's no any of the normal things that we we would find on on Earth to erode something like sand sand is not coarse okay uh, yeah okay you can use it to clean things off but sand itself is actually kind of bead like okay it's not very sharp however that's because of the fact that it's been rolled and tumbled and eroded by seawater and what wind and things like that whereas on the moon it is not okay even the finest powders are coarse Okay, meaning that the actual shapes of the individual grains are coarse. It explains also the re reason why the footprint stayed in there. We, we don't even have to go there. But because of the fact that it's coarse and there's nothing else going on there, it's able to reflect the spectral light and it doesn't have to be reflecting the ultraviolet light, which would bring the heat downwards. Okay, so... We won't go into that any further. So, Jaron, once again, okay, uh, let me go back to uh, my, my, my little notes here. Okay, so once again, I want to hear your response to why you did not respond to me disproving your theory that umbra and penumbra can exist um, because you want to say that light sources are actually uh, pinpoint, I guess. Um, I guess that would be the only reason why you can come up with that idea. Um, I need you to explain why you said on Globebusters while you were uh, criticizing an underwater habitat, supposedly uh, government related, uh, probably had to do with Mars missions or something like that, testing people's psychological happiness or whatever. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, why why you can't have a moon pool in a underwater habitat? Uh, yeah, you need to explain why that is because we've all done the little test. It's probably one of the first tests that we ever learned how to do in school, which is turning a glass upside down over water. And no air gets in, but the water stays level as if a pool inside. Um, you need to prove also why uh, why it is that you said that lenses make everything curved, and yet here we are using cameras to show things that are straight. Um, yeah, you're gonna have to figure that one out. Uh, you need to tell me where you where you lost your 8,000 plus feet of mountain in France. Um, you need to tell me where these, uh, these, these monster stationary swells are or, uh, unheard of tsunamis that make things disappear over the horizon because you claim that the water raises up. Um, and then of course on your airlock lock video, when it comes down to, um, you claiming that it was all filmed underwater and it's all bubbles, um, you need to claim, well, you need to define exactly why those bubbles were not going all in the same linear direction. 
uh, parallel with each other. They were going off in different directions, which is more consistent with a weightless environment. Anyway, so ladies and gents, you guys have yourselves a great day. And uh, hopefully I'll have that other video done tonight, uh, responding to this bullshit. And uh, it won't have anything more to do with the test. I just wanted to trim this off because it wasn't it wasn't worth making uh, uh, the other video longer. And uh, so, anyway, you guys have a great day, and we'll see you a little bit later.